Hey CCPS, it's Jeff Lawson. Today is Monday, January 23rd, 2023. Happy New Year to everybody. And uh, just, it's been a while since I've put out a video. I want to take some time to uh, give you an update and specifically on, on some of the things we've been uh, working through as it relates to curriculum resources, media centers, what you may know as libraries, the media center books. And, um, you know, for the past several months, uh, we've heard from a number of different, whether it's teachers, um, parents, community members about concerns of, of some of the books that make up our curriculum, some of the books that are available to students in the media centers, and I just want to update you on some of the things we've done and how we've reacted to this. Um, I guess to start is that we made a number of policy changes last summer uh, that changed the way we develop our curriculum, choose our instructional resources, select books for the media center, and so there are all new processes for those uh, pieces of our system uh, that will take place from this point forward. Um, uh, in terms of potentially objectionable books in our curriculum, uh, we've asked all teachers to please notify families at least two weeks out that these books are there and for them to take a look and if they are concerned certainly reach out to the, uh, to the school. Um, I think the larger challenge for us has been trying to really uh, get, a, get a level or an idea of how extensive of a problem we're dealing with in our media centers. Uh, which again, many of you know as libraries. Uh, keeping in mind that conservatively speaking, we, we have 180,000 books in our libraries com combined. So that doing a comprehensive review of all these books clearly takes time. Um, our media specialists have been working nonstop to really get their arms around uh, the books in particular um, that, that many families uh, might not want their children to see but knowing that some families are fine with it. And I think that's really been our work, is to try to meet the needs of, of all families. And we think we're, we're, we're doing a really good job with that. Um, where we have settled right now is that our media specialists are working to establish an older teen collection for our high schools. Um, older teen books uh, will be able to uh, be checked out by a student only with parent permission so that it will look more like an opt-in system as opposed to typically what public school systems do are opt-outs. So on this, uh, our media specialists have identified a set of books that the only way a student can have access is if they get permission from their parent on the front end. And we'll have a process in place, whether it's a permission slip or something on PowerSchool, that a family can go, go in and notify the school that, hey, my child is okay to check out any of these books. Uh, as we stand here right now, that collection will not be available to middle schools. And uh, you know, we'll look at, at the middle school collection more closely as time goes. But if a book has been deemed to be in the older teen collection in the high schools, it will come out of the middle schools altogether. Um, it's important to know how we're doing this. Uh, again, I, you know, I, I applaud the effort of our media specialists. They have been working so hard. Uh, currently what they've done is they've developed a rubric. And when I say a rubric, it's just really just a set of criteria that if this exists, then the school system will respond this way. Um, there is a court case from the early 1970s called the Miller Rule. And the Miller Rule was really a case that came out of the Supreme Court that attempted to articulate just what is obscene. Um, I would suggest to you that the, the, the rule we've been applying has probably been more conservative or more strict than the Miller test. But in any event, as we come across these books that we think could be a problem for a family, we are applying this rubric and making a decision whether the book stays in the current collection, whether the book comes out altogether, or if the book is assigned to the, to the older teen collection. Um, and, you know, it would be remiss for me to not acknowledge how did we get here? You know, how have we ended up in this place? And, and you know, I, I don't have a great one-line answer for you on that. Um, I think it's been a, a convergence of a number of different things. Um, it's happened over the last decade, is my opinion. Um, if you were to type in the name of some of the books that, that we are finding problems with, you would see reviews immediately, uh, must read for every teen, this book touches my heart, they'll get five stars out of five stars. And so that right off the top, you know, uh, we're struggling to triangulate and then keeping in mind that it's almost impossible to read every single book that gets purchased. Uh, 
uh, conservatively, high school libraries in particular are bringing in at least 100 books a summer. And so I, I do think, in hindsight, we need to pay more attention to every specific book coming in and what's on each page. And I can tell you that that is what will happen as we move forward. Um, another thing I think that's a, a player in this is that contemporary authors. Um, there's publishers, they want to sell books, and this is the market right now. So when you start to look at a book that has been written and directed to you know young adult, older teen kind of uh, population, is that it, it, it's typically going to involve some sort of issue of wh whether it's race relations in the community, cultural issues, uh, oftentimes having sexual scenes, and it, it just really is the theme, if you will. And so if you're buying new books now, particularly from contemporary authors, I think there's a much more likelihood that some families might find that content objectionable. So I think that is how it's happened. And, and so as we move forward, I've mentioned that a couple new committees have been put in place, specifically the Instructional Review Resource Committee, um, to take a close look at what's coming in uh, for curriculum. And then secondary, the Library Advisory Committee. This is the group that as we pr procure new books for next school year, uh, and that'll happen throughout this coming spring and the summer, is that there will be line-by-line -line reads of these. And um, so, and I really think we're going to see an improved product after we've applied these uh, more, I guess, um, uh, closely monitored processes. And I think, you know, in closing, really what we want our libraries and our media centers to be are these places where students can come and they can learn freely and they can explore different topics. And we're committed to that. We're committed to doing that for every child. And the challenge that, that the school system face is that we try to respect where every family value is regardless of the family. So what my family might be perfectly comfortable with, your family may not. And I think as a school system, we have a responsibility to offer a rich collection of materials for both of our families. And so that's where we are right now. And as always, I appreciate your time. If you have any questions, you can certainly send me an email and I'll do my best to get you accurate information. Have a great day.